Hello and welcome. My name is Stephanie and I work here at the Museum of Australian Democracy at Old Parliament House. And today I'm so delighted to connect with all of you for World Read Aloud Day. I hope you have some fantastic books that you love to read that you might like to share with your friends and family, not just today, but every day of the week. Now, we have some very special guests with us today, so I would love to introduce you to the amazing, super talented authors and readers, Kate and Joel Temple. Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? Happy World Read Aloud Day. How exciting. Thank you, Steph. You are so welcome, and we are so grateful to have you with us today. And I am just amazed by those fantastic glasses that you are wearing. Well, that's because we love them. World Read Aloud Day, Steph. Oh, very nice. Well, since I, I'm with two amazing superstar authors, I've gone with a starry outfit theme for you two as well. But I think it would. Um, I think I can get a little bit more into theme with you, and I've got some special guests that have been hanging around the museum here. Excellent. You've got uh, some bin chickens there on the museum. That's good to see. That's good to see. I I'm sure do. Play. One of our favourite animals here in Canberra. Lovely. Ex oh, we have a special guest too. Yes. It's our dog, Wicket. Oh. Hello, quick hello to everybody. Hello. There she is. All right. She's very busy sleeping though, so I'll let her go. <laughs> I hope she gives you some ideas for some oh, books that contributes up. to the writing process. Yeah. She does, yeah. She's the original underdog. That's true. Ah, very clever. A little insight there for everyone. Now, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm connecting from today, the Ngunnawal, Nunawal and Ngambri peoples, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present and acknowledge that They've been storytelling our First Nations people for a very long time now, and I hope you take a moment on World Read Aloud Day to connect with some First Nations books, but also your local community. Now, um, feel free to share with us uh, where you're connecting from today. Um, Kate and Joel, where are you? What lands are you on? We are on the Gadigal country. Yes, that's up here in Sydney. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing with us. Now, reading is such an important skill and it's not only so we know what's happening in the world, it's not only so we can support our communities and help our friends and know about lots of important issues um, happening out in the world, but it's also for fun and two of the best that do some great writing for fun, but also I've learned a lot of things um, especially about the the underdogs. I do enjoy a good mystery. I've learned a lot about bin chickens. It has created an interest where I've wanted to know more about these quirky animals. Uh, so today we're going to read a couple of books with the fabulous Kate and Joel. And what we're going to do is we will show you the books in big on the screen so you can read along with us, but also you'll be able to see Kate and Joel as they talk through um, some of their amazing texts that they have created. Now, Kate and Joel, I think that we should start with GOAT today for our readers, and I don't want to give anything away, so I'm going to hand over to you to tell us a little bit more about this book. Okay, well, this is very exciting, and uh, it's our brand new picture book, so we would love to read it. Joel, um, how should we se best celebrate World Read Aloud Day? Well, I think we should probably read aloud. You know, that's not, a great idea. Not, not quietly. We're going to read aloud. Yeah, okay, that's, it's all in the name, isn't it? And goat is a great place to start because look, look at those, look at these letters. G O A T. It spells goat. Mm -hmm. but it stands for something too. And maybe you've seen that or heard that in relation to sports stars. Sometimes, I have. I yeah. have heard it. I've heard it when they talk about the tennis and sometimes they talk about it with the footy. What does it mean? What does it stand for? Well, words can stand for things, can't they? So GOAT often stands for greatest of all time. So that's 
That's what it stands for. So that's let's that about. that's this guy and let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. So the first thing you'll notice when you open this book is that we have these fantastic end papers. And these papers have got pictures of some exploding sausages on them. And there's a reason for that. We're going to find out what that is. But first, let's get into the book. Now, this book is written like a conversation, isn't it, John? It is, it is. So yeah. which, um, could I be the goat? You want to be the greatest of all time? Oh, yeah. Who not? thinks I should let Joel be the goat? Do you think he should be the goat? Okay. Thumbs it... up if you agree. All right. So, uh, yes, I. you can be the goat. That's the feedback I'm getting there. Uh, and I will be this duck. Duck. Yes, I love ducks, duck. so that's, that's very good to do that. Here we go. So duck walks in and duck says, Hey, you look pretty pleased with yourself. And God says, yep, I'm basically the best. Okay. Best at what? Just the best. He does look pretty pleased with himself. He sure does. Um, okay. Yeah, you see, G-O-A-T, greatest of all time. Um, I thought it stood for gobbles, oats, and tires. Look at that. <laughs> Chewy little tire is eating. I don't think he's going to get through that, although goats are very good at eating things. They do they? eat a lot of stuff. They do eat a lot of stuff. So, what am I then, says Duck? You are the deadliest underwater crumb king, D U C K. Ooh, it does, look, it does stand for that. Can you see that? It says deadliest underwater crumb king, and that spells out Duck. Well, I do like to eat breadcrumbs underwater. Who doesn't? Yeah. Sounds like a great way to eat your breadcrumbs. And then on the next page, we've got a new character. Look Ooh. at that. Oh, look, it's the coolest overalls wearer. What am I? The coolest overalls wearer. But I don't wear overalls. Well, you should. I guess it'd look good in them. It'd look very snazzy in that pair of overalls. Oh, we have a new character. Oh, no. Okay, on More the trouble. next page, look who's turned up. It's their friend, the donkey. And the donkey says, hi, guys. Hello, devourer of nice, kind Easter yams. Who? Me? You bet. He's so happy about it. Look really? how happy that donkey is. He likes being a devourer of nice, kind yams. Easter yams. Joel, what is a nice kind of Easter yam? Well, it's a nice kind of Easter yam that you eat at Easter, I suppose. Oh, we yeah, might yeah, start yeah. seeing those on the supermarket shelves soon. Oh, he's the greatest of all time. Uh, really? I had no idea. Yep, goat. G-O-A-T. Hmm. Donkey says, I thought that stood for... Grunts often at termites. And Goat says, I don't do that. And down in the bottom, can you see all those ants? They say, yes, you do. Oh, it's you. Terrible eaters really must investigate the exploding sausages. T-E-R-M-I-T-E-S. Termites. And they say, that's not a bad idea. And look at them down there. Can you see what they've got? They've got a little cannon. And what are they firing into the air? Exploding sausages. They're the exploding sausages from the first page. And Bang. Go and Goat asks, has anyone seen the Duke of Growling? What does that stand for, I wonder? Have a look at those letters. Duke of Growling. You guessed it. It stands for dog. D-O-G. Who? You mean the dog, says Donkey. Where's this dog? Do you want to be the dog? Can I be the yeah, dog? Yeah, you be the no. dog. He says, yo, I'm here. How are we all? Oh, great. In fact, I'm the greatest of all time. And they're doing a high five. Doing a high five. Nice. We'll do another one. Oh, that's a... that, 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 missed. <laughs> that, was that was terrible. And the dog says, oh, you are pretty great. Goat says, thank you for noticing. Hard to miss. But seriously, goat, the greatest of all time. I mean, I can be a goat if I want. 
How can a duck be a goat? Well, that's a good question. Great question. How can a duck be a goat? Well, duck's got the answer. Duck says, easy. I'm a good or awesome tap dancer. And look at him doing that little duck. He does look like a good or awesome tap dancer. Oh, now cow says, oh, oh yes, I'm a goat too. Gorgeous octopus arm twister. Hey, you don't twist octopus arms, do you? She does. Poor octopus. You should never twist an octopus's arm. (laughs) It's not a good idea. It's not a good thing to do. Oh, what's Donkey doing? Look, guys, I'm a goat too. Gallops on any table. Hey, you are a goat. Oh, look at those little termites. And we're goats too. Grand orchestral, amazing talent. And there they are. What are the instruments we can see here? What what have we got? We've got a little harp. Yeah. My favourite, the triangle. Oh, yes, and a cello. And one of the termites is playing the drums. Okay, excellent. Saxophone there, cymbals. Yep, I guess they are a grand orchestral amazing talent. Well, I guess anyone can be a goat. Yeah, you're a goat, you're a goat, you're a goat. Let's all be goats. What a party. Let's go, let's go. There's only one animal that doesn't want to be a goat. Can you guess? It's octopus. <laughs> and he says, I'll pass. Look down the bottom. What do those termites say? They say, L O L. What does that stand for? <laughs> we is might that... have to get to that in the next book. Yeah, I bet you know. So that is our new book, Goat. goat. Yeah, about a goat that is the goat, but maybe all of the animal, other animals are also goats too. I, I think we can all be goats. Yeah. I think you guys are goats. Who else is a goat? I'm a goat. Are you a yeah. goat? Yeah. We're goats. I think so. That's terrific. You know what, though? Oh, I think you're right. We are all goats, and I've been thinking a lot about this, Kat and Joel, and I'm keen to see uh, what you are the greatest at all time at. I'm thinking that because I'm Steph, I am the super talented educator of Parliament House. I've oh. added an O in there. Oh, <laughs> yes. well done. That is great, Steph. You are the goat. I- I think that works for me here. What are yours? Perfectly. Okay. Well, my name is Kate with a K. So I think that I am a kind, apple eating, treasure hunting emu. An emu? Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I guess that kind of works. Yeah. Well, look, I'm 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 going to base my name J O L J O L. Yours my... is very short. Yeah, I'm going. So to... it has to be very good. Well, I'll base it on my favourite uh, pastime, my favourite leisure time activity. Okay. Which is jumping over lemurs. What? Yeah, I love doing that. I'd love to jump over lemurs any chance I get. Steph, I wonder if some of the kids would like to think about what their names might stand for. That's a good idea. Oh. That's a great little activity to to do today sometime yeah i agree with you i think that's a fantastic idea and perhaps they could create a classroom display where oh. they share what they are the greatest at all time i'm a little bit jealous about your lemurs there oh yeah yeah Joel? It's, you know, just, <laughs> just something i like to do yeah yes no, i think though. no 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 semi-professional Semi-professionally, okay. And and next time I'll be a bit more creative with my response and I think I might use my whole name, Stephanie. Oh, so yeah. um, it'll be an epic uh, one yeah. for, my, for my next um, offering for you. But we would love um, for our fabulous audience today to think about what yours might be. Maybe it's something that you could pop on your door to your bedroom on a lovely piece of paper. You could decorate your greatest of all time or for your classroom as a lovely offering at the beginning of the year where you share with others perhaps some things that you bring to your learning spaces that you are very good at. So thank you to both of you for sharing that delightful, fun, silly beautiful book with us now can you tell me while i while i've got you and we had some wonderful questions uh that were sent in by our participants today can you tell me what inspired you to write this book oh well joel and i really like reading and one of the things that we like in books is when they play with words and f- sometimes it's a lot of fun to do these word play games and this felt like a good idea for a book because it's wordplay 
What do you think, John? Well, that's right. You know what? We I think we got started when we were driving behind cars and we started that's seeing true. the number plates and thinking, what could that stand for, those three letters at the front? We love playing that game. We yeah. have two kids and we always play that game and see who can come up with the silliest thing that a number plate stands for. That's right. I think that's a great one. And I think that gives our lovely students connecting today another activity that they can do, especially when they're on long car drives. Yeah. Um, exactly. We'll definitely make it more exciting um, for the family. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Um, now, I'm keen while we've got you, perhaps you have time to read another book I for think us so. today. We do. That yeah. would be great. Excellent. Ah, oh, lovely. Now, this was tough to choose from because obviously you have such a fantastic collection that I've I've bought from home today. And as always, I like to comment on the colour coding. Um, I'm after a good rainbow and I appreciate the efforts of the spines of your beautiful books. And I know that you have a lot of bin chicken texts that are in there, but I wondered if perhaps, because it's also so, so much joy, if we could read Bush Turkey today. Absolutely. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Steph. Now, I Steph was just talking about our other books, about bin chickens, and sometimes kids ask us, but why do you write so many books about birds? Because we do write a lot of books about birds, particularly native birds. Joel, why do we write so many books about birds? Well, they're fun little characters. They're in our world. We see them around in the, in the skies above us, in the playgrounds. So they're, they're part of our world and, and we kind of uh, get inspired by the things that we see and we do. interact with. And they're also, we have got some of the naughtiest native birds in our country. That's the thing. And they give us lots of ideas for stories. I wonder if the kids have ever seen a bin chicken in their playground. I'm sure they have. I'm yes. sure some of you would have. Maybe some, sometimes kids tell us that they've even stole, they've seen a bin chicken steal their lunch. That's true. Yeah, that's but, true. And some of you may have even have seen a bush turkey in your place. Yeah, I wonder how many of you have got these in your neighbourhood. One time, Joel and I went to a school to, to visit a school and talk to some kids and read some books. And when we were there, we were invited into the library and the teacher said, come into the library and you could sign some books for the kids. And we we're like, OK, that sounds great. But just before we went in, a bush turkey snuck in just before us and it went into the library and it started wrecking the library and pecking at the books and then it did a really naughty thing. What's that? It pooed oh, in the library. That's right, it did. <laughs> don't, don't try that at school. These class. are naughty birds, but they're native birds and we really like them. So we're going to share this story. Let's read along. And let's read aloud. Let's read along and read aloud. Do you want to read this one, Joel? I'd love to. Now, in the dark undergrowth, near a tree fern crop, where the leeches wriggle and the frogs go pop, is an unusual fellow. He's really quite quirky. He has many names, but let's call him a bush turkey. His bald head is red like a traffic light. His tail plumes are as black as midnight. He wears a yellow necktie and he's impeccably dressed. And right now he's building the world's best ever nest. Can you see his nest down there in the corner? I can. Yeah. yeah. And look, there's a little frog on top of his nest who says, hey, safety first. He's got a little crash helmet for his friend, the bush turkey. I think that's because bush turkeys aren't very good at flying, so they might need a little safety helmet. And Bush Turkey says, I'll need more than sticks to make my home flash, says Bush Turkey, taking off in a wobbly dash. His beady eye is on a neighbouring block. There it is. Utes parked out front, tradies on the clock. They're building a house right up from the ground. Timber, tiles, tools just lying around. Now Turkey struts onto the site. He needs no introduction. All this hardware has sparked his appetite for construction. Wow. They're really building that house up, aren't they? Look at that. Look at all those busy builders. Hmm. But what's Bush Turkey going to do? Oh, what I could bang up with a cordless power tool, a dream mansion with its own horizon pool. I'll use that timber to build an entertaining deck 
And then he makes off with a nail gun wrapped around his neck. Uh oh. Cheeky bush turkey. So cheeky. And look, the frog is running too. And I think they're starting to take some of those uh, builders' tools, aren't they? That's a bit cheeky. Oh dear. They won't miss a bag of cement or that tube of old glue, says bush turkey, which of course isn't true. And down the bottom, you see the frog, and the frog says, Come on, toughen up. But watching this heist is a working dog named Molly. There she is. Sharp as a tack, tough as nails, a dingo cross collie. I think she is. She looks like a dingo cross collie. She doesn't does, she? exactly. What a lovely dog. Oh, but she's not happy. This dog, Molly's not happy. She says, hey, that's not your stuff, you cheeky old bird, barks Molly, running so fast her feet are all blurred. Bush turkey is startled and begins to flap wildly. It all turns to chaos and that's putting it mildly. Look and the, at him go. And the little frog's right in front and he says, drop it like it's hot. But you know what happens next? <sighs> turkey bangs into a ladder. Clatter, crash, floppity, do paint tins go flying? What a hullabaloo! The concrete mixer is knocked to high speed, and the barrel goes rolling. Builders caught in the stampede. Oh my goodness! What look a mess! At, what a disaster! Everything's gone flying. It's not looking good. But what happens next just isn't fair. Poor Molly gets the blame and shoots Turkey a glare. Bush Turkey struts off while Molly's put on a leash and the tradies break for a pea and ham quiche. Oh, yeah, nice. must be morning yeah. tea time. Morning tea. Turkey takes full advantage of Molly's situation and helps himself to a roll of insulation. Oh, look at poor Molly. You can see her barking there in the corner. Oh, Molly's still on the leash. Yeah. She is. Now turkey then he makes off with whatever else he can carry even the hard hat of a builder named barry i think the frog's got that one hasn't he <laughs> and some bricks on top must be heavy now turkey drags his loot back into the bush pulling heaving huffing with a feathery push it's time to start work on an engineering feat nailing timber threading wires pouring concrete now beams and rafters are slapped together with plaster. Bush Turkey stands back to admire this wonky disaster. Oh dear, well, how's it look? Let's have a look. Um, a masterpiece, says Turkey. A masterpiece? Oh, well, I guess so. A masterpiece, says Turkey, as he lays the last bricks. It's the perfect home for me and my soon-to-be chicks. Oh, look at that. Look at those little eggs. Bush turkeys put the eggs into the nest. And he thinks that, that a home can come in all different shapes and sizes. But the best houses are full of surprises. Oh, look. look. Can you see the little bush turkey baby that's just hatched? That's very cute, Just isn't popped it? out of the egg. And the frog says, you're totally adorable. <laughs> That's a little bit of a wordplay too, totally. Yeah, that is a like wordplay. Like a toad, like yeah. a frog. Yeah, like yeah, a frog. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you know these birds and they're in your neighbourhood, one of the things you might have seen them do is kick with their very strong legs. They kick a huge pile of leaves together and they put their eggs inside that pile and... It acts like a bit of a heater, doesn't it, Joel? It does, it does. Makes the eggs uh, warm up. Warm up. Yep. And then so they, they hatch. The right temperature. And that's how they come out. Do you know the other animal who does it? Um, no, that is strange, isn't it? What kind of a bird would do that? I don't know any other animal. I don't think other birds do it. No, mm. it's it's a it's an animal. What is it? It might be an animal from a long time ago. What is it? It's a dinosaur. Wow. Dinosaurs do that too. So the bush turkey is a bit of a dinosaur bird. It does That's look a so bit like interesting. a dinosaur. Did you like that one, Steph? Oh, I did like reading that one. And I particularly enjoyed following along and seeing what that tiny little frog was <laughs> up to as we read the book. I love the bit where he's wearing the hard hat that says Barry on the top. <laughs> <laughs> You're also making me think about, um, I love watching the bush turkey's journey and creating the perfect nest um, for the eggs. And you're making me think about how we can create classroom spaces 
Ooh, that yeah. are perfect for our young people and how they are involved in making shared spaces. I'm also seeing a pretty good STEM activity in this, in being able to design a, a nest for a bush turkey without perhaps borrowing some supplies from a construction site, but maybe yes. some recycled materials in the classroom um, would be a lot of fun. Maybe some found objects, exactly. Ooh, that would be good. Idea. Great idea. Yeah. Now, we had some questions that were sent in about this book, and I am keen to know, when you're writing a picture book like this, do you have a say in the illustrations? Was was the frog part of your design, part of what you asked for, or does that come down to the illustrator that you worked with? Do you know mm. what? The frog came as a complete surprise. We love frogs. We, we love frogs. And we might have some frog-related news in a, in a moment. We might, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But it did come but, as a surprise, and that's one of the really nice things about working with illustrators. So we always have a chat with our illustrators and talk about our vision, but illustrators have got lots of ideas in their own heads. And so what's so nice is when they bring all of their ideas and when we look at the roughs, which are just drawn in pencil, we always have lots of surprises in there that we like to find. And that frog was one of those surprises, it wasn't it? It certainly was. The other little uh, surprise is the, I don't know if you guys have noticed, there's a little tiny rat who hops along next to our bin chicken in the bin chicken yes box. yes and that he was a surprise as well we never wrote a rat in there and all of a sudden there he was saying all this cheeky stuff well that's the and nice we love him. We that's love him. the nice there thing about working together with people though because you have their ideas as well as your ideas so that's why we like working in a little group oh i love that and of course i've already gone to look for our little cheeky rat that's in the bin chicken series as well i'm Definitely after this session, taking a closer look to see um, what that rat's adventures look like in yeah. um, in the bin chicken books. Now, um, you've been writing books for a while and not just picture books. You also write fantastic chapter books as well. Uh, do you have a favourite? Oh, that's a mm. tough one. You know what? I like lots of different kinds of books and that's why we write different kinds of books. So we love to read picture books uh, and we love writing about animals, but at the same time, I love graphic novels. So that's why we're always trying to write different sorts of things. And also I write chapter books because sometimes it's really nice to read chapter books too. What about you, Joel? Have you got a favourite? I do like those underdogs. You do. They're fun because I love a mystery. You and do. And that's what the mystery. underdogs uh, are all about. They're uh, dog detectives who are trying to solve crimes in a place called Dogtown where there aren't any humans. It's all sort of populated, or should I say, populated by dogs. Yeah. And There's I like the mix of text that you have in there um, with um, Ratsack. At the moment, there's some there's some clever wordplay that are in your in your books, but um, I agree with you. The Underdogs is a is a fantastic series. I do like a good mystery. Now, how many books have you written? Oh, okay. okay. I I think I did a count the other day, and yeah. it was at twenty. We've got twenty six books that you mm -hmm. can read in a bookshop or a library. Yeah. But we've written more than that because we have some new ones coming out this mm, year. Mm, mm. So maybe it's nearly 30. That's awesome. It's yeah. a lot of books. Do you have some that you're hiding away that just didn't feel quite right or aren't ready to be published yet? Yeah, everyone always has things in their bottom drawer. That, um, not literally, like they're on the computer actually, but... Yeah, yeah. But I think you've always got ideas that sometimes haven't quite made it out. And that's one of the things that happens when you're a writer. Sometimes you have ideas and they're not quite right. And that's just part of it. And that's okay. Then you come up with another idea. That's right. That's right. Ah, that's lovely. Uh, and, you know, I appreciate that you're always reflecting on what you're writing and that idea of that not everything might be perfect already to, to go to print just yet. Now, do you have any advice for our aspiring writers or even illustrators that might be out there? The book writing process is, involves a lot of people, but do you have any advice for our young writers? Absolutely. I think, I think young writers inspire us all the time. We're lucky. We get to visit a lot of schools and we get to meet young writers and yeah. readers. Yeah. 
but they um they really inspire us with the, some of the stories that they tell us and sometimes some of those ideas end up in books like the bin chicken yeah i sometimes. think my biggest tip for writing is you know sometimes when you sit down and you've got a blank page and your teacher says we're going to start doing the writing exercise and you think but i don't know what to write about sometimes it's a good idea to look at the world around you maybe it's something that's happening in the playground maybe it's something that's happening at home you can think about the animals in your life and use your own life as your inspiration that's a good idea we do that all the time mm. that's how we got the idea for our bin chicken mm. and bush turkey books and sometimes it's a good idea to, to write this stuff down when you think about it so maybe keep a little book you know not, not, mm. not a actual story but a little place where you can write down some funny things you might have heard or a, maybe it's a funny character that you, you're thinking of and you could draw a picture of them too that's a good idea yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then if you get stuck writing though I reckon I can have a snack, have a cheese toastie or something. <laughs> That's what I do. Good advice in there. Lots of good advice. Who doesn't like a cheese toastie as well? <laughs> but um, I always have my best ideas um, when I'm in the car um, and I've got that quiet time. But also I've found when I'm out at the clothesline is my new spot where ideas will come to me and I'll, like you said, I'll write things down in a little notebook. So I think that's fantastic advice for our um, young people connecting today. Now, since it is World Read Aloud Day, do you have other favourite books that are not yours? Or what do you enjoy reading just for fun? Mm, okay, yes. that's a great question. There's so many good books. At the moment, I think I've really enjoyed one that comes out of Ca of Canberra. I've enjoyed uh, Neil. The oh, story. the amazing oh, the sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that story about that's the sea fun. cucumber. That's that's, really, that's a lot of fun. That's my new uh, picture book that I've enjoyed reading. Yes. Uh, and um, I think, but I'm also reading chapter books. I like reading big chapter books, and I like reading Tristan Banks's books. If you're if you like reading books about mysteries and that sort of things, I like his new one called Scar Town. Have you got some that you like, John? Well, I like those sort of uh, graphic novels, a bit like The Underdogs. I like that style. So there's there's one called Rat Bags by Tim Harris, Ooh. and that's illustrated by the Underdogs artist uh, illustrator Shiloh Gordon. That's that, a good that's one. really good too. They're good fun. Yep. Yeah. Oh, excellent. There are some good reads in there for our audience to, to have a look at as well. Now, um, since we've got you here today and you made a slight mention that you might have some books that are coming out this year, do you have any secrets perhaps, anything that you could share? We with do us? have a secret. But it's top secret. It's top secret. It's just, totally classified. Just between you, uh, me... And, and the, these kids. And the 5,000 kids on the call. Okay, okay, so here's the thing. Actually, the truth is this. We have not shown this cover to anyone. No, we haven't. And we thought it would be really nice to share our brand new series with you guys today, but no one has seen it. It's not in the bookshops or the libraries yet. It doesn't come out until the beginning of April, and this is our new series. It is called frog squad frog squad mm -hmm. heard it here first oh there's a cover of it yes a... and frog? we've got a picture yes, how it beautiful is. is this i, I am know. so excited to hear about frog squad can you tell us a little bit more about what this frog squad gets up to okay so frog squad is a team of action frogs and they are their job is to patrol and rescue so what they do is they get out on the waterways and they've got amazing kit so all these hopper crafts and they live on a mystery base called the lily pad and they have to rescue really serious serious events don't they yeah yeah they're wherever there is danger that's That'll that's where you'll find frog yeah. squad exactly the other funny thing about this book is joel and i have written a we've written ad breaks into it with strange froggy businesses that interrupt the story so just as you're reading along suddenly it says we have to stop this book because there's an ad break and you think what in a book why is there an ad break that's a bit weird and then joel's written all these really silly frog ads so we we're looking forward to sharing this when it comes out yeah it's a lot of fun 
it's a lot of fun. We hope you um, we hope you uh, have a read when it, when it comes out. So not long to wait. Not long. A couple of months. Not long to wait. We can add it to our calendars. I'm excited about seeing these ad breaks that are built in there, and it's giving me vibes of um, the untrue podcast and the ads that appear in the in the dog town world as well so i think that'll be fantastic for our young people and perhaps they can create their own ads to accompany your books what a fun thing to do to create your own persuasive writing ad that would be fun good activity good activity absolutely now we have had such a wonderful time hanging out with the two of you today and we are incredibly grateful for world read aloud day that you could inspire our young audiences to read more and connect with some of your wonderful texts that you've created uh we've shared lots of activities already about what teachers and our young people can get up to uh when they're not busy reading your books and for our fabulous teachers out there we've Created, created a resource specifically uh, to inspire you so you can continue World Read Aloud Day in your classrooms. You will find these on our website. You will also get an email after this session where you can access the resources. And I highly recommend that you also go and check out Kate and Joel's website, all of their book titles are listed um, on their website and also fantastic teacher notes and resources for you to utilize in your classroom as well. So Kate and Joel on this amazing World Read Aloud Day, thank you so much for connecting with us, for bringing your fun, wonderful books to share with our audience and your joyful giant sunglasses, Joel, like just something else. <laughs> Thank you for having us and a thank pleasure. you to all the kids for listening to us read aloud today. Yeah, real oh, And uh, make sure you do uh, read aloud a little bit later on after school and, yeah, keep reading, guys. Always. And I think they can perhaps share a book with a loved one or with someone in their class today. One of their favourites would be so fantastic. But enjoy the rest of your day, Kate and Joel, and to our lovely audience out there, have a wonderful day and happy World Read Aloud Day. We'll see you next time. You too, Bye. Steph. Bye. Happy World Read Aloud Day. Bye.